<laughs> episode 10 of Apothecary Diaries literally feels like the writer's going, hey, are you getting it yet? <laughs> the end of the episode is literally him going, are you looking at my cards yet? I'm revealing all. If you're not putting it together, put it together now. Uh, but still, despite that, I absolutely love this episode and how they're telling the story, honestly, because despite the fact that I feel like the writer is revealing too much, my mind is swimming with the why. But why, though? That's the massive question mark. Because, yes, let's just, let's just jump right into it. The, the end of this episode, I think, is the meat and potatoes here, and I don't think it really has too much to do with the rest of it, so we'll get to that in a bit. But, yes, at the end of this episode, you literally have Goshon is looking into the previous emperors, the, the stuff that happened back then. He's looking into the archives itself, and he's looking into it for Mamao. And as he's doing that, he's literally saying, that 17-year-old, she's so smart and wise, and she's just beyond her age, and she's a little weird, but... She's really smart. What is what is she seeing? That 17-year-old. That 17-year-old. <laughs> that By the way, did I, did, I, did I say she's 17? And then it cuts to Mao Mao looking into this information that he found. And it's talking about, yes, the, the previous emperor and the fact that he had a child. The same time, the current emperor had a child while they were a prince with Otto. And it's saying that one of them died. The one that they had with Otto was a son. And that one died. And yeah, by the way... Just in case you forgot, that was 17 years ago. <laughs> but additionally, oh yeah, Loman was a doctor there. And he was exiled. He was kicked out. Hmm. By the way, did I tell you that Mama was 17? <laughs> but like I said earlier, the question mark is why? Why? And what exactly happened? Now again, we're kind of pointing out two things here. The previous emperor's wife, she had a child, which is the youngest under the current emperor. And that one is always sick and always gone. And my initial thought was that, that that's Jinshi. Obviously, Jinshi disappears and comes back while they said that the, the previous emperor was kind of sickly and disappears a lot. Oh, by the way, he was he was at the garden. And then Jinshi shows back up and he's a little disheveled. And Mama makes a joke about them, him getting a little hot and busy with somebody. But it's probably because Jinshi changed. So my assumption right now is that Jinshi is in disguise and he's actually the younger brother of the current emperor. And now we're pointing out the idea that this, um, that Otto had a child, was a son, that died one year later. And oh yeah, by the way, Loman is in exile. What did he do? He's very smart. He was kicked out of the palace. Why? What I'm getting at here, what seems to be obvious here, is that Jinshi and Mama were born at the same time. They're, I don't think they've actually mentioned how old Jinshi is, but I assume that he's 17. I think they're, they're, they were pointing out the fact they're pretty similar age. So what I'm getting at is that Jinshi and Mamao, I think, are those two children. And they were born at the same time. And Loman took out took Mamao out of the palace. Or at least he was sent out under the guise that he was exiled. He had to have done something bad. Or he's working with somebody to get Mamao out. But again, the question mark is, why? <laughs> so my current theory is that Jinshi might be the son of Odo. Because Mama was pointing out earlier in this episode that, hmm, Otto looks very familiar. And of course, my mind immediately at the time said, oh, it's Jinshi, obviously. But wait, <laughs> Jinshi? The, but what, what about the younger brother of, of the current emperor? Oh, this episode pretty much points out that's probably Mama. The fact that Mama was the, Mama was basically a princess that was taken out of the palace by Loman. Now, the question mark is, why? Again, that's the massive question mark. What would be the purpose of them taking this princess of the, the previous emperor out of the palace? Typically, in this kind of setting, the women don't have any power. So it's not as if she's going to take the crown or anything like that. Why would they need to get her out of there? What purpose do they have to getting her out of there? Did she, were, they, were they fearful of her life because she was a daughter? That doesn't make any sense. None of that makes any sense. So again, that's the great, great thing about the whole situation is the why. Why did they take Jinshi and put him in the place of Mau Mau as a part of the royalty itself. That's the question mark. Unless Otto did not have that son, Jinshi, under the current emperor. Maybe it was a previous emperor. And maybe this is all like some way of them sort of covering up what actually happened. I There, there, there is something to be said about how they're doing the story that it puts so much emphasis on the previous, the previous uh, rulership. There's a lot of this story that's intertwined with that previous setup. And I think that's a good thing because it sort of creates a, a bit of a mystique about what happened. Because currently, everybody that's currently there, which is for the current emperor, 
are not going to know what happened previously, except for certain characters that are sort of being put into play, like I would assume the head lady in waiting to um, Otto. I'm assuming that she's probably got tie-ins with the previous emperor. Then you have Lishu, and that fact that she was a concubine for the previous emperor. She's probably going to have a lot of insight. That's probably why they're trying to get rid of her. I've kind of speculated that before, that I think Lishu's pro they're probably trying to get rid of her because she has some sort of tie-in. But again, that's, that's why I'm loving this so much. Why did they get Mamao out of there? Why would they need to get her out of there? What did Mamao's adopted father basically do? Why they exile him and possibly injure him the way that they did? All those things are kind of swimming through my head and why this swap happened. Because that's the I think that's the biggest question mark that I have right now. Why did Jinshi take possibly Mamao's place as the youngest uh, under the emperor, current emperor, and then Mamao gets sent out? All those question marks are, are really fascinating to me and I cannot wait to get the answers to them. <laughs> but anyways, that's all that. And that's, that's going to be there for right now. <laughs> I speculated on enough. Let's get into the rest of the episode because there was some juicy bits in this episode, which is, yes, basically Jinchi <laughs> sending Mao Mao to her death again. I, I like that we had this previous episode where Jinchi's literally, you know, talking to Mao Mao and she's like, oh yeah, by the way, if, if I make a mistake and you have to execute me, give me poison. And he's like, why would I do that? Why would I do that? And again, like I mentioned that episode, it's because Mama realizes, I think that she is being put into a lot of situations where somebody's going to want her dead. And the first moment she steps out of line, she's dead. And it, it's so funny to have that happen. And then literally the next episode, Jin, she's like, Oh, so do you think, uh, did you hear the rumors that this, uh, this, this, uh, lady in waiting that jumped to her death, that, uh, she was a part of that poisoning. And Mama's like, yeah, and your point? <laughs> I heard that. Well, do you think she actually did it? That's not for me to figure out. Again, my speculation there is that, yes, they had her killed in order to cover it up. Oh, I want you to go over to that palace. <laughs> I want you to go to that pavilion. <laughs> it's like, literally, Jenshi, you're sending her into the wolf's den, and you're wondering why she's uh, fearful of actually getting executed. You're making her get involved with something that is going to get her killed. <laughs> it's just like, it's so bad. But yeah, she goes there. She sees how great things. Everybody's working super hard. And oh yeah, by the way, the head lady in wedding's got the little burn mark on her. And yes, she connects it to the fact that this robes was burnt at the same time that had a burn mark in the same spot. So yes, obviously, she's even though that she's really, really nice, she's obviously involved with that whole situation. I completely forget that they had a robe that was... I don't know that they actually mentioned the fact that there was a, a clothing that was put in with those plates and it had a burn mark on it. I knew about the, the fact that there was clothing thrown in there. I knew they threw those those pieces in there, but I forgot they mentioned the fact that there was a burn mark. But yes, technically pretty much covered, you know, connects it to her. Now, the interesting thing that comes from this whole situation, I think the bigger puzzle piece is obviously Li Shu. Her, her connection with this particular pavilion, this area where Ado is, the fact that she's coming there, the fact that she doesn't like honey, and the fact that, yes, the head lady in waiting has some sort of connection with the family that, you know, puts this stuff together. And even though Li Xu seems to be terrified of it, she's coming there, and there seems to be a connection there. Now, I think the connecting part that stood out to me the most was they point out the fact that the head lady in waiting has is is high up. Like she has a she's from a family that's very well known, a very powerful family, and she's very devoted to Ado. And they did mention at some point that Li Xu was, of course, part of the previous emperor's concubines, and that she went home, and then the current emperor came into play. And he brought her back in. And my speculation has always been that Li Xu knows something from the previous emperor that somebody wants to shut up. They don't like her. But it could be the fact that Li Xu was somehow possibly from the same location that this head lady in waiting is a part of. So it gives credit to the idea that it's not necessarily Ado's doing. It's more so the fact that the head lady in waiting is doing it on her behalf. She's doing it as a loyalty to Ado. And it could be possibly because her family back home is possibly maybe from the same place that Li Xu went back to. She doesn't like her. I'm probably going to be more leaning on the idea that it's possibly because it could have something to do with Mao Mao. It could be possibly something to do with this swap that happened. But I don't see what the benefit to the head lady in waiting would get unless it had to do with benefiting Adu. Which it could. It could if Li Xu possibly knows that Jinxi is Adu's son that she knows that connection but obviously i think the thing that they're kind of pointing to to being the big answer to this whole mystery is obviously eventually when she goes back to jinshi and he's trying to press her for more information she eventually connects it as he's trying to stick his honey covered fingers in her mouth it was gross oh like again that's another one of those 
Genshi, I started to like you. And now you're back to the creepy point, which is fine. That That's the comedy. The, the, the comedy in this series for the two of them is the fact that Jinchi is a creep. Even though it seemed like he chilled out for a while, he went right back to his creepy ways. And she, even she knows that. Yes, technically, he, he just comes at her with his honey. And eventually, she, it snaps to her. She puts everything together. Lee Shu's afraid of honey. She doesn't like honey. Yes, this head lady in waiting, she has some sort of access to honey. And I was kind of surprised that she didn't mention that. I think it's because she's trying to... She's still trying to look into it. She's trying to find, I think, the, I think the thing that Mao Mao is doing right now is trying to find the root, which I think is credit to her character because that's something they've been talking about for, shoot, the last, like, four episodes and this idea of, especially when she went back home, putting out this idea that she's making these assumptions without, like, an actual evidence. And I think right now she's trying to actually put together that evidence because this is a big deal. She can't just tell Jinxi, yeah, it's probably the lady in waiting. She's connected to this honey. Honey's back home. Again, possibly tied in with Li Xu's family. She wants to take down Li Xu. She wants to find the root. Why are they trying to take out Li Xu? And I think that's going to have something to do with the previous rulership. And that's why she's having them look into that. But yeah, she eventually goes to Li Xu. That's when we pretty much highlight again the sort of abuse that's happening to Li Xu herself. And the idea that these these lady in waiting... It was, it was kind of sad because for a brief moment there, you almost get a sense that... Are they going to turn this to where the actual lady in weddings do like Li Shu? They just like to bicker about her. They do care for her, but they just, they like to bicker. No, <laughs> she's, they're literally trying to mold her like they're the only ones that can take care of her and trying to isolate anybody else from her. They're isolating Li Shu. They are abusing her by isolating her. They do, they want her to not trust anybody but them as they treat her horribly, which is I'm surprised that she didn't say anything at that point. Like, of all the times that Mau Mau speaks up, this is the one time she doesn't. Besides you, <laughs> besides throw Jinshi under the bus saying, yeah, I was sent by Jinshi. Yeah, now they're going to go after him. But I did like it. It was very subtle, but I did like the fact that when she first arrived, she's like, oh, I thought Jinshi was coming. Well, whatever. What do you want? And then she realized who Mama was. She, she immediately realized, oh, you're the one that helped me out. Okay, what can I do for you? It's like very quickly, Li Shu goes from a state of... I was just excited to see Jinshi. Now, okay, I don't care anymore. To immediately, oh, okay, what can I do for you? You were the one that helped me out before. And yes, it gets into the fact that she is afraid of of, of honey. Specifically, and again, this, oh, this pretty much ties it in with the whole previous stuff, is specifically, Li Shu, when she was an infant, she had some sort of honey, and it was, it was nearly lethal for her. They didn't really say why, but they banned her from having honey ever again. Now, again, it kind of plays into this idea of, I think what Mama initially was saying was food poisoning, which definitely makes sense. I've, I've had that as well. I mean, I, I'm hoping that a lot of other people kind of experience as well, is it's a very relatable thing, is when you eat something and it has food poisoning and or you have, you get food poisoning while you're consuming something, no matter what, it's like all the ingredients that were involved, despite the fact that maybe, maybe it was this one ingredient had something in it that, that made you sick. It's the whole thing of it itself. That every time you even think about eating, like for the longest time, it was flatbread for me. I had these one flatbreads and at some point I got really badly sick. And then every time I think about, even till now, right now, right now, <laughs> thinking about having a flatbread anything, I get sick. Like it, 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 my stomach starts to turn. It's because your mind like attaches that illness to that consumption, no matter what was in it. You can probably eat the ingredients in it. It's just that, that entity, it's connected to that. And it's sort of kind of connecting that specifically but that's kind of what leads to Mama wanting to look into it more. Look into what happened in the past. What what transpired in that previous moment? Additionally, in this scene, obviously, is Mama bringing up Feng Min with Li Xu. And I think that's the thing that sort of makes me so tied in with it being something to do with her. Something outside of the palace. Again, when Li Xu went back home, she seems to know who Feng Min is. And she's terrified. Specifically, she's terrified of her. Mama wants to look into the past events of the rear palace in order to find that connection. But again, that could possibly be the previous emperor. I think this head lady in waiting is obviously old enough that she could be tied in with the previous setup. So, which obviously makes sense because she was with Aldo, which was the only concubine that was with the current emperor when he was still a prince. I just don't think it's as simple as the idea of not wanting another concubine to be in the picture. Because what they've kind of stated several times is that Aldo is getting up there. And she's probably going to be the first one to sort of get replaced if they decide to bring in another concubine. And I don't think that's the case, especially since they've kind of pointed out the fact that Ado is actually like a sibling-in-law with the current emperor. 
And as Mama kind of points it, that's probably why the current emperor seems to sort of favor Ado a little bit. And again, I think that's probably more likely because, yeah, technically there's a connection there with Jinshi and everything. But why I don't think it really works is because there's nothing to say that he can't have another concubine. He can have as many concubines he wants. Yes, he only has a select amount of time with each one of them. But again, as Mamo even points out, he's not even with Li Shu. Li Shu's too young and he's not spending any time with her. He's not visiting her at all. And I've kind of mentioned before, I don't think that Li Shu was brought in to be a concubine. She's Her status is a concubine, but I don't think that he brought her in to be a concubine. Again, she was from the previous emperor. She was either brought in to cover up a secret or because he cares for her, wants to take care of her. But sadly, it seems like they're more and more trying to point out the idea of Li Shu knowing something that she, that people don't want her to know. Anyhow, I am, I'm really curious to see how this kind of all plays out. It looks like the preview for the next episode looks like things are going to get very, very crazy and I cannot wait for it. Uh, it's, it's so crazy to know this is actually going to be a two core series because we're only on episode 10 at this point and we have so much more to go through and I'm loving it. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Like I said, I love the whys. I love, I, I'm not, I don't much so care about the reveals more so than the whys. I love questioning this stuff and really trying to dig into it and figure it out before it actually fully reveals everything. Some other notes I have in here, I, I love the whole segment where they got all prepared for Li Shu to come by for Gyokyo and she's pointing out the idea that they, they're putting more preparations into play and they're being more cautious than even when the emperor himself shows up. That shows how like, how on guard they are to the other concubines and yes, technically the same sex and now they're all kind of keeping an eye on each other. I got a massive kick out of the fact that Mama once again got kicked out of the, <laughs> kicked out of the room, <laughs> and, but it wasn't for the sake of getting rid of her like it was with Li Hu. It was actually, or Li Hua, it was actually with uh, the fact they want to clean up and as per usual, they want to take care of Mama. By the way, all these question marks that I have is just me speculating. I don't need answers to any of these things. I, I, I think I've seen somebody I seen a comment at some point where it was like it sounded like somebody was going to I've I've gotten to the point now where when I'm reading a comment I can kind of tell by the first few words that somebody's going to reveal something. I don't need an answer. And like like let people speculate. We we don't need you to bestow knowledge upon us. We can all read a book if we wanted to. We're having fun watching the show. But yeah, that's uh that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. If you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what's thought of the episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button subscribe my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more and like this content, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super links, membership button down below. Greatly, greatly appreciate everybody does, and y'all take care.